Thank you all for being uh, with us here today. A lot has happened in the past 24 hours since the last briefing. I'd like to bring you up to speed on what I know and then take a few questions. Uh, let me first start with some generalities and then get down to some more granular details. Uh, first, uh, now that the hurricane has come on shore, uh, our primary concern uh, remains dramatic flooding. Uh, according to information that I was provided, uh, there's been about 20 inches of rain in the Corpus Christi area, about 16 inches of rain in the Houston area, and our biggest concern is the possibility of between 20 and 30 more inches of rain uh, in areas ranging from uh, Corpus, Christi, Corpus Christi over to Houston. Uh, because of the, the flooding, uh, one of the uh, top focal points that we are concerned about uh, is ongoing uh, rescue and recovery. Uh, we want to do everything we possibly can uh, to keep people out of rising water. Uh, part of that is by uh, constant warnings to the public uh, about being vigilant, about observing rising water around you uh, as you're traveling. If you are traveling out on the road, uh, always watch uh, for water on the road, remembering uh, that when you come across water, it could be far deeper uh, than what your eye observes. or uh, the swiftness of the current can be far stronger than what you perceive. Uh, you all know uh, the well-known uh, phrase, and that is, turn around, don't drown. Don't risk your life. Uh, still, the most important thing uh, that all Texans can do who are affected by the storm uh, is to put your life and the protection of your life first and foremost. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the, the state and uh, various agencies uh, remain very active uh, in the uh, search and rescue process, and that will be one of the foremost tasks uh, that we undertake in the coming days. Uh, we have uh, focused on working with and supporting evacuees, uh, especially from around the Corpus Christi area, uh, now expanding to some larger areas. I had the opportunity yesterday afternoon uh, to go to San Antonio to visit with evacuees uh, as they were getting off of buses uh, that had come in from the Corpus Christi area. Uh, you could sense uh, a sense of uh, relief on their part that they were out of uh, the way of uh, what was an increasingly threatening storm. They were happy uh, to be alive, uh, and they were at peace in that regard, uh, but obviously also concerned about what they had left behind, uh, about the possibility that they uh, had lost or would be losing uh, the place they lived, as well as some of their property. Uh, but most importantly, they were uh, just happy to be alive. Um, I have issued a disaster declaration that originally included 30 counties, uh, and this is a state disaster declaration, and we have now added 20 more counties uh, for a total of six counties. Uh, as you probably know, uh, I requested uh, a federal uh, disaster declaration that the President granted last night. This is incredibly important and extremely fast. Uh, what the presidential proclamation uh, about our, dis our disaster declaration does is it uh, immediately triggers uh, uh, the, the implementation of FEMA uh, and FEMA's assistance uh, for uh, individuals as well as cities and counties uh, for all of us uh, to begin uh, the, the rebuilding process as quickly as possible. Something else that I did uh, yesterday is I issued a proclamation uh, waiving uh, hotel occupancy taxes for all evacuees and first responders. Uh, it, so in any place in the state of Texas uh, where there is an evacuee or a first responder uh, who is uh, affected by this storm, uh, they will be able to have the hotel taxes waived. Um, I just got word from the Fort Bend County judge who has issued a voluntary evacuation for uh, the Brazos River area in Fort Bend County and a mandatory evacuation along the San Bernard. Uh, this is uh, one of the foremost regions in the state of Texas that already has flooding 
and we anticipate the flooding to grow worse in that area. Uh, this morning, I, I had the opportunity to make phone calls to several of the mayors who were affected by the hurricane last night. Uh, I spoke with the mayor of Victoria and spoke with the mayor of Port Lavaca. Uh, I made phone calls to the mayors of Corpus Christi as well as Rockport. And uh, with the latter two, I did not have the ability to connect with them but left messages for them. Uh, for the mayors of Victoria and Port Lavaca, uh, they seem to be in strong spirits. They obviously uh, uh, preside over cities that uh, have suffered some very meaningful damage, uh, but they are working very aggressively uh, to try to help their citizens uh, respond to their challenges. And I offer them, uh, as well as the mayors of Corpus, Corpus Christi and Rockport, uh, any and all help uh, that the state of Texas can provide. Now for some more uh, granular detail uh, as a result of the briefing that I just had. Uh, looking at the uh, Texas Military Division, uh, there are uh, more than 1,300 service members who are currently activated, and we anticipate increasing that amount by 500 more, uh, getting us above 1,800 service members who will be activated uh, to assist in, in responding to the hurricane and its aftermath. Uh, as far as the Texas Department of Transportation, they are, are already uh, undertaking cleanup operations uh, around the Corpus Christi and Yoakum areas, uh, working to clear pathways along roadways there, uh, which is impressive that they were able to get in uh, that quickly and begin that process. Uh, with the PUC, uh, they say that there are more than 338,000 outages, and uh, it will still be several days, perhaps, uh, before those outages will be able to be addressed. The reason for that is, is because uh, the wind speed in the area uh, of where they're going to be able to take care of those outages has to decrease below a certain level before they are able to respond. As far as emergency services are concerned, uh, which includes uh, the Texas military, uh, includes Texas Parks and Wildlife, it includes Texas Task Force One and Texas Task Force Two, uh, one of their primary focal points is uh, search and rescue. Uh, they've already made several uh, search and rescue operations, uh, primarily hoisting uh, through the helicopter process. And we have about a 1,000 personnel in the state of Texas who were assigned to search and rescue. The Texas Parks, Parks and Wildlife has about 1,500 evacuees at state parks, and again, uh, any cost uh, that would normally be occurred, incurred at a state park has been waived for evacuees. For the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, they uh, have assigned about 80 uh, troopers to the Corpus Christi area uh, to assist uh, in law enforcement needs uh, in that region. For the Red Cross, uh, they have uh, 21 shelters open already with a population of about 1,450, and they have 42 more shelters on standby to be ready. Importantly, th those are Red Cross shelters. There are so many other uh, shelters across the state of Texas, whether they be uh, local churches or uh, other local facilities. Uh, and we are very, very appreciative of uh, everyone in the state of Texas who, who is providing shelter, food, and other supplies. Along those lines, I, I do want to express my gratitude. Uh, at the shelter that I was at yesterday, uh, there was a need uh, for towels and, and for blanketing and, and bedding uh, for the people who were there. Uh, we made a public plea, and that plea was answered very swiftly. Uh, so thank you to the people of San Antonio for responding to the needs of the people from Corpus Christi uh, who have shelter in San Antonio. Uh, on transportation, uh, we have 228 buses that are available uh, to continue to move evacuees, and more than 100 bus trips for evacuees uh, have already been uh, undertaken. Uh, we have, uh, uh, across multiple agencies, uh, we are in the process of uh, getting water, ice, food, and supplies 
uh, to needed areas. Uh, we're in the process of working to set up staging areas where uh, those supplies will soon be able to be delivered uh, to those who need them. With that, why don't I take a few questions? Sure, yes. Sure. The, the, the best information we have uh, are predictions about uh, the rainfall that will come on top of the rainfall that's already occurred. Uh, and that is that uh, in, in various key regions ranging from Corpus Christi uh, to the Houston area, uh, perhaps as much as between uh, 20 and 30 more inches of rain could be coming down. Uh, that is coming down on already saturated ground and already filled up waterways, whether they be creeks, bayous, or rivers. And, and so there is the potential uh, for very dramatic flooding. It's essential for uh, people who are near those flood zones to do several things. One is to obviously be uh, aware of your surroundings. Uh, two is to listen uh, to uh, warnings given out by local officials and heed those warnings. Uh, and, and three, uh, whenever you, you do venture out uh, by car or any other way, uh, be very cautious, uh, knowing that uh, not only is it rising water, but oftentimes it will be swift moving water uh, that can carry you away. Uh, for everybody in the state of Texas, uh, your top responsibility is to protect your life. So whenever you're near water, be sure that you're doing everything to stay safe. You know, uh, we don't have any information right now uh, that we can confirm any fatalities. Uh, that's information that we will be working with local officials uh, seeking confirmation that we can report later. Well, whenever, whenever we receive confirmation of fatalities uh, and confirmation that it was a result uh, of, of the storm as opposed to some other cause, uh, we will confirm it, but uh, we cannot confirm it at this time. Have you received any unconfirmed reports that you're looking into? No. How, do you know about how many rescues have been uh, So what's happening right now is our first responders are absolutely putting their lives on the line to get out there and do search and rescue for any of those that are still in need. And I think what you're going to see over these next few hours and probably into days is that as the wind conditions and the weather conditions allow, they are going to get out there and do as many rescues as they possibly can. The message to those that may need help or rescue is make sure that you put that signal out there that you are still there and you still need help. If you still have electricity or phone service at all and batteries, send those messages out, make sure that we can see them. But I need you to keep our first responders in your thoughts and prayers because they are absolutely risking their lives to get out there in these dangerous conditions to look for those that are in need. Governor, can you share with us some of the human contact you had uh, talking with the exact police, and this is something you're going to continue to do as this uh, scenario plays itself out. Right. It, it was uh, so heartening uh, to shake the hands of these evacuees as they got off of these buses. Uh, and I, I walked around uh, uh, the school uh, that they were uh, being housed in and got to visit with them. And uh, uh, they are what I call typical Texans. Uh, they were resilient, they were strong, they were strong-spirited, uh, they were happy, uh, they were just happy to be there and be alive. Uh, but obviously they were in need. Uh, there was a part of them that were, were facing a sense of the shock that comes with displacement. And uh, there, there was a, a growing need for supplies. Uh, they are, are receiving three meals a day. Uh, but. Uh, they are, they are, uh, they're just so warm hearted, so full of spirit, and so pleased to be alive. As we get down to two more. Is, is way too early uh, to make any estimates about that. What I can say is that we are so pleased uh, that the federal government and the White House have stepped up uh, in the strong way they have. Uh, by granting our disaster dec declaration 
uh, that will enable Texas and Texans uh, to be able to better deal with the financial consequences of the storm. Yeah, I have no information about that. Sir, you suggested earlier in the week that there were um, people not heeding the, the evacuation calls, maybe more than expected. Is that, is that still the case? Uh, well, I'll, I'll correct that. I, I, I didn't suggest that they were not heeding it. Uh, I, what I was suggesting is that uh, if uh, a local official uh, has warned people uh, to evacuate, uh, it is very important uh, that citizens heed those warnings by their local officials. Great. Thank you.